Good morning to everyone and certainly happy Mother's Day to all of our moms in our community. We thank God for his blessings. Uh, it's been a wonderful blessing, of week, a week of blessing. I hope that you've enjoyed God's uh, bounty and his abundance. Uh, I thank God for our yearly theme, which is witnessing the glory of God. And that's my prayer every day. And I pray that you also are keeping that spirit uh, as you go through the year. We're in the fifth month of this year, and I just pray that you've seen some great things that God has been doing. I certainly have. God has continued to demonstrate himself this week has been no exception. Um, brother and sister, friends of uh, ministry uh, and our Golden Lampstand ministry, I was able to visit their nine acres of land that God has given them, and they have zero money, but God saw fit to bless them, and so it was just a witness, and we'll get a chance to work with them, and so again, I have seen God's glory, and so the theme that we have this month, don't hide it, so the light that we have, we cannot hide it, because others need to see this light, there are many that are waiting to be healed, delivered, set free, and they need to see the light that's shining in us. We, when we live a life of God, full of God's glory, other people will see and they will want what we have. And that's what's important is you only be a true witness, not just someone who has the name of a Christian or believer, but truly to be a believer and walking in the light of God. And so that's my prayer for us as we continue this month. Don't hide it. And whatever it is, don't hide it. Uh, just praying with some uh, believers this week and just saying how, you know, inviting God to come into our heart and, and lifting up anything, taking out anything it should not be. Uh, and so that we don't have to hide. So I pray for you this week. I uh, pray for this word. I pray that you're in a place to hear. That's an encouraging word, but there's also uh, some serious aspects of the word that I want you to get. Um, today. And so when I think about what's been on my brain to this week and the last couple of weeks, especially as we think about this um, holiday that we celebrate here, you know, over 80% of Americans are celebrating this Mother's Day. Uh, and there's a lot of history with that. But the things that have been on my mind have really been about the program that I've been doing. And most of you know that I've been in women's health for over 30 years and uh, lifting up women. Women's health has kind of been part of what God has placed in me for my entire life. And that's the, the mission that I do. The job that I have happens to be uh, in line with the mission that God has put me on the earth for. And I thank God for being in my professional life in one place. Um, for over 30 years, but Healthy Start is a program that was started in 1991, and it's really a program about giving children and families uh, a healthy start, working in, with women to ensure that they have healthy babies and that babies stay alive beyond their first birthday, and we've been working with men and fathers over these years, and so we built great programs over the 30 years, and I'm truly thankful to God, and when I think about a happy Mother's Day, or Father's Day, or Children's Day, any day, I can't help but think about the work that I do, which I believe is God's work, and working with those that are most vulnerable in our in our society, uh, women and children, so I thank God for that, <clears throat> and so as I think about Mother's Day, um, I've been thinking a lot this week, and every, it's not happy Mother's Day for everyone, so there are lots of stories, and Colton alluded to some of that, and so I just want to share a bit today of really a about Mother's Day to celebrate and lift up our mothers for sure, but also to share some information that's important because I think we want to think about moms. We want to think about what prayers we should have for moms and our community. I think we can learn a lot from just looking at mothers and, and how hard it is uh, to be a mother and really the responsibility under God given to mothers and fathers, but mothers in particular, uh, to really carry uh, the seed. I think it's really powerful when you really meditate on it and God will give you that revelation. So I'm speaking to you, not just as Pastor Ken today, but think of me and the work that I do also every single day, which I'm blessed to be able to do. And I wanna share some of that work with you today. And so for me, there are great women uh, that I work with and get to work with all the time that are, over the years have become friends and wanted to lift them up this morning because you may see their names uh, about in the news, not only in this country, but they're doing international work. And so just lifting up Dr. Monica McLemore, Dr. Karen Scott, uh, Dr. Kimmery Bug, and Dr. Joe Career Perry. Uh, these are women that I know and work closely with and the one in the middle is Belinda Pettiford. And I've worked with Belinda over 20 years. And these are women that are leading initiatives, health initiatives that focus on women and children. They're heads of uh, departments of this government and this country that runs programs. And also uh, the, those that are doctors, um, Joyas and OBGYN. And they're really working and advocating uh, for healthy moms. And so these are women that I'm proud to work with and certainly want to lift them up today and say happy Mother's Day to them, not because they're mothers in the natural, but even 
in the work that they do to save mothers' lives all around the country. And they're just a few of the women that I get to work with all the time. And these are a few others that I want to special shout out this morning. Uh, a good friend of mine, Dr. Magda Peck, and you all have joined in me in praying for her several months ago when she uh, was going through her breast cancer. And she is uh, cancer free, but she had a tough, tough uh, end of the year, beginning of this year, but she is continue to do great work and her attitude and, and her faith has gotten her through. And so that smile that you see is a smile that she has and uh, recently was able to hold a, a grandchild for the first time after COVID and sickness. Uh, and so I celebrate her and happy Mother's Day to her. And the woman to the right is jo Dr. Janelle Palacios. I'm working closely with her as we even look at working and uh, supporting mothers in our native American communities and her work as a midwife uh, and a doctor, a professor is just incredible. So I love working with her. And the person in the middle is pretty special to me. I've known her for quite some time. I met Tamala when she was a consumer and she was really in the midst of a great struggle uh, with all of her children. And God has done great things for her. And she was able to get her life together. And she is a woman of faith as well, really getting her life together and allowing God to strengthen her and working with our programs over the years in Chicago. And she went back to school, got an undergrad degree, went back and got her master's. Now she's a PhD candidate. And she is a board chair of a national organization, Health Connect One. And so again, incredible stories and talk about not hiding your light. And she's someone that took her story and her testimony, if you will, and has continued to advocate for women and families all across this nation. And so she's someone that I had the chance to mentor. And so I'm extremely proud of her. And these are women that I think about today when I think about Mother's Day, um, because it's not just about one day, it's, it's all those days. I think of the days of Tamala's struggles. It was about those days. I think of the days when her community rallied around her, supporting her, though every single day, getting through day by day. So it's all of the days and not just one day that we should be celebrating mothers. And these are certainly women that I celebrate and her in particular, because I just love her story. Uh, and so one day you'll hear her story as she continues uh, to let her light shine across the nation. I want to remind us this month is also National Mental Health Awareness Month, and we've been talking a lot about behavior and mental health. As you know, it has been exacerbated under this pandemic, and so I encourage you to continue to pray for those that you know that are struggling, and just pray for people just to be well. And that's an important prayer to have is to be well, to do what we need to do to take care of ourselves on every level and be just becoming well. So uh, maybe there's some things in your life you're working on trying to fix and, and make better. That's what becoming a vexia, becoming wellness is all about. And so we encourage you to just pray for others throughout this month. So today's subject is they could have said no. They could have said no. It's been a rough week as we've heard the SCOTUS um, or comments, conversations around abortion and, and uh, overturning Roe versus Wade. It's been a tough week for a lot of people in conversation. And so I wanted to share today, and God wanted us to pause and think about this. They could have said no. And so choosing motherhood, choosing motherhood is important. But they could have said no is kind of where I want to go today. We start as babies, and so we start to be concerned about our babies. You measure the health of a community by looking at its infant mortality. And if babies are dying before their first birthday, things are not doing well. In America, we're not doing well. We have an infant mortality problem. Babies are dying at alarming rates, and some of the highest in the world compared for, to industrialized countries. We are doing horribly, and we have some of the best healthcare in the world, but not everyone has access, equal access, equitable access. And so we still have babies dying at alarming rates, and Black babies dying two and a half, three times the rate of white babies, just to give you an idea of the great disparities. And so the prayer for babies is important as we're praying for mothers and thinking about mothers. Really, it starts with babies, doesn't it? And for babies, think about the girls that are born, the girls. And girls have to grow to women. There's a whole continuum that we need to talk about. And how do we secure the health and well-being of infants? We think about the young girls in school age. We know what's happening with them in early school, middle school, um, high school. We know what goes on even in college, the, the challenge they have in college. 
And even as a woman, women's health is something we don't focus enough on. How do we secure health and well-being during this continuum? And that's what we have to focus on. How do we achieve wellness across the continuum? It's not just about one day or one incident, one episode of pregnancy. It's about really what happened in her life as a girl that led to her one day having a baby. We have to pay attention to the infants, the girls, the women, and mothers. So motherhood, let's talk about motherhood. God's intent for motherhood, God intended for there to be motherhood. He said in the beginning in Genesis to be fruitful and multiply the earth. This partnership that God established between man and between woman, between husband and wife, was a part of a mission to populate the earth, to be fruitful and multiply, to have children and replenish. That's what God wants and create community. God is about community and motherhood certainly is an important part of that. So it's important to understand that that was God's intent. Motherhood is God's intent. So if you want to find a place where do you stand in the conversations, be clear about it. God's intent was motherhood, and he wanted us to be fruitful and to multiply. And then think about it. Eve could have said no. And that's the subject. They could have said no. Eve could have said no. In Genesis 3.16, and we talk about 3.15, but 3.16 is important. It said, then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain will you give birth. Those are two big things that I heard. Eve probably heard, she said, I'm going to have pain during this pregnancy. I'm going to be in pain when I actually give the birth to. Eve could have said, no way, Jose. Not only Eve, but you look through the Bible, Jochebed could have said, no, times are very bad around her. Why should she have another baby? All kinds, she could have said no. Think about Sarah and Abraham. Sarah could have said, no, I don't like what's been said to me. I am not ready. I don't want to do this. Not today. She could have said no. Hagar could have said no as well. All that she went through, trying to be helpful, but all of a sudden being treated like that. She could have just let go and said, abandon the kid. Like she could have said no. Hannah could have just said no. Look, I'm tired of begging you for a baby. I'm tired of, you know, going through my sister-in-law, getting on my nerves, talking about me. I'm, I'm tired of this. She could have said no. Mary, Jesus' mother could have said no. And what it would it have done for us if Mary had said no? I don't know a man. I ain't been with nobody. People are going to talk about me. Mary could have said no. Every mother since Eve could have said no. Honestly, what if they said no? So Eve could have said no. In Genesis 4 and 1, it says, now Adam had relations with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant. And when she gave birth to Cain, she said, with the Lord's help, I have produced a man. These are important things to hear here for a mother. With God's help. And the way to be a, a good mother is to have God's help. Because things are not always perfect. The pregnancy doesn't go perfect. And we know the children aren't always perfect. But she said, with the Lord's help, that's important to understand as a mother and a father, with God's help, we can raise this baby. We can produce this man. So it's with God's help that we can be mothers. And we thank God for his help. And maybe that's something you want to say right now, mom. God, thank you for helping me with my child or with my children, because we know that we cannot do it alone. So I want you to first know that God helps mothers. That's important. And we need to share that with other mothers. Mothers in a struggle say, hey, God helps you. God will help you raise this child, raise these children. God will get you through this confidence that we have to really begin to build up and looking at the arm of God as our strength. But what if she decided not to become a mother? What would that have been meant for mankind, humankind? Jesus wouldn't have came. So thank God that he helps mothers. Now think about Jochebed with, with Moses. Now she could have said no too. Things are very bad. There was struggle all around them, oppression of the people, et cetera. But she could have said no as well and killed her own baby. That was a decree to kill the baby boys, right? The midwives were instructed by the Pharaoh, kill those babies. So living in a time where children, infants' lives are being threatened, similar to today, verse 2, verse 1, it says, and about this time, a man and a woman, Yochebed was her name, right? From the tribe of Levi, they got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special boy, and she kept him hidden for three months. Verse 3, 
Listen to the care that she takes with this child. But when she could no longer hide him, she was engaged. She understood it was in danger. But when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus um, reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch, preparing something to carry this child through life. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. So moms, it's hard sometimes. Your children can be in danger, but you do the best you can to protect them. So we see a mother protecting her child from the environment, from the things around him. And that's what she did. We protect this baby in this basket. And she put him in the Nile River, which is dangerous. Now, for me, sending our children to school that's not a, a Bible-based, Christian-based school is always a challenge. That's like send them into the Nile, send them into this world. Amen, which is against God. That sent them into the Nile. But again, she did this knowing that God would protect. But I like what was said in the fourth verse too, because this is a word for siblings, right? It says, the baby's sister then stood at the distance watching to see what would happen to him. And I think as siblings, and I don't know about you all, yeah, it's Mother's Day, but I think about my, my siblings as well. Do we watch over each other? And a mother would teach her children, watch over each other. That's important because we know the enemy wants to come with division among siblings. And if you're sitting out there today and thinking about this, say, yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing well with my brother, my sister. The enemy loves that because he does not want to see us together. He doesn't want us protecting each other. But what a great thing for a mother to teach her children. Hey, look out for one another. And I love this about Moses' sister Miriam, looking over him and teaching your children to look over one another. That's what a mother is going to do. And apparently the mother did that. Watch and make sure he's okay. And that's something important to pass on. So as a mother, she could have said no, but she trusted God, she depended on God. And again, she uh, encouraged her daughter, watch over him, watch over him. So that's a word right there if you have more than one. So safe childhood, as a mother, father as well, we need to think about what a safe childhood looks like. I think building family, building strong family, teaching your children to take care of one another, teaching your children to be responsible for one another, giving your kids all they need so they can grow up and have what they need and they can function in life. This is protective and safe childhood. And that's what a mother is concerned about. How do I keep my child safe? Not just as a baby, but as they grow up, what do I give them? What kind of foundation? The mother is so important and laying that foundation as that first nurture safe childhood. So Sarah could have said no too. And I was thinking about her and Abe. I was like, wow, that would, thank God she didn't say no either. Because, you know, we got Isaac, the promises came. But in Genesis 18, 12 to 15, it says, so she laughed silent to herself. And this is after hearing God saying to Abraham, I'm going to give your wife a baby. And she said in her head, like, how could this worn out woman like me enjoy such pleasure, especially when my master, my husband is also old? What is this guy talking about? We're going to have babies. We're old. Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. And there have been many, many that, that, that have desired to have children that want that experience of being a mother. And this is a, a passage of faith to me. Because with God, all things are possible. If it's God's will, God will do what seems impossible to us. And Sarah had a desire because she said, why would he give me a pleasure like that? And I'm so old. And it's a pleasure to have a baby. And but God heard her, right? And she could have said, no, I am too old. I don't want to look ridiculous. This is impossible. I don't want to believe. But she believed. And God, as we know, gave her a baby, but she could have said no. So remembering motherhood, and that's something else. God remembers mothers. And I know as a young minister, that was in my heart all the time. I, and Kobach and I, we ministered to, to moms because there are a lot of single moms that, um, um, with children. We said to them, look, get in God's face. God loves mothers and God will hear the heart prayer of a mama. So I believe in that because the responsibility that God has given mothers, God remembers motherhood. And so that's an encouragement as well. God remembers me. You should say that to yourself. And then think of Hannah as well, right? And she could have said, no, I'm not going to keep going to God. I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm not going to do that. And 1 Samuel 1 11 says, and she made a vow to God. 
She says, oh God, Lord of the armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer, give me a son. So God is answering prayer, giving her a son. She said, then I will give him back to you. Mothers, I think it's so important that we give our children back to God. And she said, he will be yours from his entire lifetime. She was taking the responsibility to do what she needed to do as a mother to make sure that he grew up and understood God. And we know she took him back to the temple, gave him over, surrendered him to the Lord. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. So it lets us know mom was doing something to signify that he belongs to God. Mom was doing something, her behavior, her practices, what she was doing with that child was cultivating him to serve God. And I think as a mom and a dad, that's what we should do to our children. We should make sure that they love God, know God, and train them up, teach them up, and also have them looking a certain way. They don't look like the world. Our little girl should not look like the world because in, in our society, a little girl can look like a grown woman. But how we dress them and adorn them and keep them for God is really, really important. She could have said no, but we saw she was faithful and we saw the blessing. She desired to honor the sacredness of motherhood. And I think that's a wonderful desire to have. Father, I want to have a child to the sacredness of motherhood. She honored what it meant and was sorrowful because she didn't have it, but God heard her, pro her cry. So there's a sacredness and a sanctuary of motherhood. It's our mothers that really help set that foundation. That's why the enemy tries to destroy our children and our mothers so early. There's a sanctuary of motherhood. Having a mother, my goodness, that gives you great confidence. I'm a dad and I love being a dad, but I will tell you, having the sanctuary of motherhood, like if everyone else thinks you're ugly, your mother's going to say, no, my baby's beautiful. So there's a sanctuary. No, my mother is not going to call me ugly. My mother is not going to kick me to the side. Other people may but I can depend on my mother. And you talk with people, they, will, they, they go crazy about their mother. Why? Because there's a sanctuary of motherhood because the power of a mother over a child is incredible. And that is from God. Thank God for mothers. Again, but not just for us, but it's for God's purposes to be fulfilled. And that's why God has given mom such an anointing to raise children, to give them that sanctuary, that security that they need. And that's why we see many have lost that security of motherhood, the sanctuary of motherhood. Then I think about Hagar, who had a had a different experience, didn't she? You know, she wasn't bothering nobody, but also as a slave of the house, she was used by the master of the house to, to have a baby because the wife could not. And she did a good thing. Hey, I'm helping these people out. I'm giving them a baby. And then the mother, Sarah, got mad. See, Sarah was, Sarah was something, but we'll, we'll say it for another time. Genesis 21 and 10, it says, so she turned to Abraham and she demanded, this is Sarah after hearing the Hagar's son, who's a teenager now, talking about little Isaac, little baby Isaac. When she went to Abraham, she says, get rid of that slave woman and her son. He's not going to share the inheritance with my son, Isaac. I won't have it. So Abraham got up early the next morning, prepared food in a container of water and strapped him to Hagar's shoulder. Thank God for this, the father in Abraham. So even though his wife, legitimate, she's the head of the household. I mean, the head of the house, she's the woman of the house and she had that power. She said, get rid of Hagar and that baby. I don't want them here. Abraham knew he had to follow through, but he got up and he was making provision. So as a father makes the provision, he made a provision for Hagar. Then he sent her away with their son, and she wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. There are moms, and when I think about single moms, and this is one of the scriptures I've used to, uh, to help really fortify the work that I do and to remind me God has not forgotten about single moms that don't have dad supporting them. For whatever reason, God is not just going to leave you wandering in the wilderness. God will come and get you in the wilderness, and that's a message for moms that are struggling in so many ways. But he sent her away, and there she was wandering. In verse 15, when the water was gone, she put the boy in the shade. She was, she was giving up. Then she went and sat down by herself about 100 yards away, and she says, I don't want to watch the boy die, she said, and she burst into tears. But God, somebody needs to always say, but God. I love when you said, but God. But God heard the boy crying, and children are crying today. 
and I have a love for children and I hear the cries of children. I hear the cries of children that have been disconnected from their mothers. I hear the cries of children that maybe men now also crying for their missing daddies. God will hear the cry. Hagar could have said no, but she was present and she heard God speak and God gave instructions for survival. Mama, God will give you instructions for survival. Things may look bad and they are bad, not just look bad, they are bad, but God will help you to survive. But she could have said no, but God bless and she survived. So safe motherhood. And that's an important one because the work that we're doing now is about safe motherhood. How do we keep women safe, mothers safe, keep mothers alive and healthy? How do we keep our children safe? So safe motherhood, taking care of our children is taking care of our mothers. And that's something else that you can go into, safe motherhood. And I said, Mary could have said no as well. Jesus' mother. And Luke 1 and 30, she responds. She says, I am the Lord's servant. Mothers are surrendering themselves to God as servants of God. This is a big task to bring seed into the earth, to bring humans into the earth. It is huge. But Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you said be come, about me come true. God, have your way. Lord, You, this is your child. Lord, have your way in me. And that's a prayer of a mother too. God, you, bless, you seem to bless me with this child and may your will be done according to my life. And that's important as a mother to be know that I'm God's servant. You are serving. It's a ministry. Uh, Colbert and I were listening to some shows this weekend about mothers talking about being, but it says really being a servant. When I heard that, I was like, that's exactly it. A mother is truly a servant. She serves with everything she has. So servant motherhood is part of being a mother. Not again for one day, but every single day. Now this is a doctor, Dr. Judy Ann Bigby, which I met almost 30 years ago when I started my, my work. And when I started my work in 1993, I met this young woman by the name of Val. Valerie was her name. And Valerie was struggling with substance abuse. She was addicted to crack cocaine. She was 19 years old. And when I met her, she kept come to my meeting. It was her and her three children, and she was actually pregnant. She came to that meeting with her social worker who they knew that when Val had this next baby that the Department of Social Services were taking all four of the children. And she was very sad and she was about 80 pounds and pregnant because she was so thin from her addiction, but she was desperately trying to get out, but she needed help. And that's how she came to our program that evening. And I remember I called my colleagues, we talked with her. We began to say, you can get you into this program. We can do this, we can do that. And it was Dr. Judy Ann Bigby, who was one of our advisors, who was a medical doctor, uh, OBGYN. And Dr. Bigby said that she would take Val under her wings because she was so impressed with this girl, wanted to help her, that she like took her under her wings to make sure that she would come to the programs. Well, let me tell you, because of women like Dr. Judy Ann Bigby, who had a heart for mothers, and because of a mother like Val, who was willing to let it all out. She didn't hide where she was. She was in struggle and she needed help. And I will tell you from the other community work we did, she also gave her heart to the Lord over time. And what happened with Val, because she was supported by Dr. Bigby, Val went back to school, got her undergrad degree, and she became a family health specialist so she can help other moms. And that's what she was doing when I left Boston all those years ago. But I will never forget how emaciated she looked when I first met her, because I had a chance to see her a few years later. And she was healthy weight, and she had all of her children, she had gotten secured all her children back in her, into her home, because by that time she had bought a house. Else. But what happens when, when, when God allows people to invest in you, he puts support around you, God is able to do great things. And so all the things I've talked about motherhood so far, thou experienced those. And I have witnessed how God changed her life around. So we have to support motherhood. That's why there are programs like the one, the Healthy Start. Well, we started with 15 states around the country. Now Healthy Start is in 101 states across this country supporting motherhood. And the reason we need to do that, because now we have this crisis of maternal mortality where, where moms are dying in childbirth and afterwards. And we need to help keep our moms alive, not just for one day to say happy Mother's Day, but every single day after a mother has a baby. Don't you know we need to keep eye on her to keep her well and keep an eye on her for 12 months at least? 
because there's so many things that happen after having a baby. We think, oh, she's good after the postpartum visit, but we have to keep an eye on her up to a year later. And there's so many things that are preventable. Over 65% of things that happen to women afterwards that they die from are preventable. So we need to support motherhood. And this is a friend of mine, Chris John, Charles Johnson. Charles lost his wife a few years ago, but he is an advocate now. And we now have a maternal death act. And you all should be aware of that because that's this act in place to make sure we address the maternal death crisis in the United States. And so he now, Kira was pregnant with little Langston, who's in his arm there, the smaller child. But now he has to raise his two boys alone because he lost his wife, who was super duper healthy, but there were things that happened that caused her to die. And he's raising those boys by themselves. And so he started this foundation for her. But these two boys don't have their mother today, but they have Charles. Thank God for him. So we need advocates. We need, he was someone who lived through this experience. He and I talked because I lived through that experience. Almost lost my wife and still lost a baby. But it was a very traumatic event that I don't talk a lot about. But I was able to share with him because of what he went through in the hospital as well. Losing your wife, a mother, is really, really hard. So fathers are here too. And we have to be proud of what we do ahead to keep our moms healthy and alive. And as people of faith, there's much that men need to know and do so we can have happy Mother's Days. Not just one day, but we want our mothers around for the community, around for their children, around for us. We have to support mothers, not just for Mother's Day. And this is Simone Landrum. And in 2018, there were a lot of articles written about maternal mortality, women that died. And these are a, a powerful story here. She's pregnant here with her two sons as well. And she wrote a note and she died after, um, and after giving birth to this third child. But during the time they were working with her, she wrote a little note that says, I know God has his arms wrapped around me and my son. But she, we lost her, right? For these children, Dylan and Caden, and their brother and her mother to raise her child. As I've shared today, God helps mothers. God remembers motherhood. Motherhood is sacred. We're a servant motherhood. God, we want safe motherhood. Motherhood should be simple. It's not complicated, it's simple. And we can keep this simple. God will bless us. And we need to support motherhood. And so I want to close in these next few slides. Simple motherhood. When we talk about simple motherhood, simply motherhood, right? Carrying and protecting the baby in the womb. And then once they're born, providing for and protecting them outside of the womb. Isn't that simple? And then just simply being there, supporting beyond the womb, like in their lives. That's simple motherhood. Carrying and protecting the child in the womb. Providing for and protecting the child outside of the womb. And then simply just being there, supporting being on the sidelines as they're going through life as, as a mother, powerful. But we know there are challenges, things that can interrupt, that to disturb this whole simple motherhood. It's not so simple if I have issues, health issues and challenges when the baby's in my belly. It's not so easy when I have challenges after my baby's born where I can't, can't nurse or breastfeed or, or the baby's taken away from me because of other social issues. It's not so hard if I'm not around when they're growing through life. So simple motherhood can become complicated and complex, but how many know God is there to help and support? So the carrying of the baby, yielding of the body to this baby, this new human that's coming, that's a great sacrifice, mom. Yielding yourself outside out of the womb, watching a mother do whatever she needs to do to take care of her kids. And, and some of you have never seen a mom in struggle but I've seen it and, and, and what they have to go through to take care of their children, to make sure they're eating, to make sure they're going to school. There's a lot. And I'm always humble when I see these women because they understand what it is to be in a struggle to take care of your children. And they're doing an awesome job. And there's so many women I think about for Mother's Day that I'm just happy. I would love I can see them to say happy Mother's Day to you because you're awesome. It takes courage to be a mother. It takes courage to be a mother and deal with challenges. It takes courage to be a mother that's struggling with substance abuse. It takes courage to be a mother that's struggling on her own. But God knows I want to say happy Mother's Day. Because watching God strengthen and support moms is awesome to see.
as they yield themselves to these children and this yielding of their hearts. And sometimes children don't show their gratitude, but a good mother still has her heart yielded to her child. So it's simple motherhood, but God will strengthen you to be there along the way. Simple motherhood is not always simple, but God is always God, isn't he? This is a friend of mine, Kathy uh, Mitchell, and I've learned a lot about fecal alcohol, alcohol syndrome through her over the years. And this is her daughter, who's in her mid-40s now. But Kathy was using alcohol during that time. She didn't know better when she was pregnant. And her child suffered. And now mid-40s, and, her, and, and, and um, um, Kylie is, has a, like a first grade kind of level of understanding. But Kathy talks about this. And, and now Kathy is the national spokesman for an organization that addresses fetal alcohol syndrome. She didn't hide it. She let her light shine. And she is a believer, by the way. And she's doing this incredible work and in talking about it does make a difference when you drink during pregnancy, when that baby's in you. It makes a big difference. But the wonderful relationship she has and yielded to her daughter and they talk and do, um, and she go around the country speaking together. But she's a constant advocate. So I say happy Mother's Day to my friend Kathy as well, because I've been encouraged watching people use and depend on God's strength to get them through and do incredible things. Because even through struggle, God can bring and turn things around for good. And she's doing incredible work and her voice is being heard around the world. Before I close, I can't talk about mothers without talking about children. And just from working with the administration for children and families in their reports, you all there about, 400,000, over 400,000 children that are in protective service that without their parents, without mom, without dad. And they range from infants all the way up to teenagers. But I mean, there are 400,000 children in this country. And of those parents, about 64,000 parents have lost their rights. They will never be able to get these children back. So think about it. You want to pray, you can be very specific. 400,000, 407,000 children you should pray for right now. 63,800 parents you should pray for right now because whatever they're going through, someone has decided you are not worthy and you're not getting these kids back. Whatever their struggle may be, we should be praying for them too. And then the disparities are there. Most of the children in custody in this country are African-American children who make up only 14% of the US child population. They represent 20% of kids in child welfare. This state alone has this disparity as well. And the rising group is American Indian and Native Alaskan children. Small percent of the population, but they're accounting for a high percent of children in protective services. So pray for these children as you think about mothers today. I know you celebrating, but don't pause and pray for the children. Amen, that don't get to say Happy Mother's Day. And so I close by just sharing, because I know that people are buying flowers and gifts are going to be celebrated today. And that is awesome because it is so well-deserved. But according to the National Retail Federation, don't you know they're expecting to, to uh, amount $31 billion will be made off Mother's Day? And so we think of Anna Jarvis and why she, you know, she's the one that uh, started um, the Mother's Day, but she wanted it to stop. Why? Because of the commercialization of Mother's Day. It really has lost its integrity of what she intends. So behind the flowers and behind the gifts, I pray that there's something behind those flowers and gifts because it's more than flowers, you all. See, flowers are a symbol. They're a symbol that does not come close to the actual value of motherhood when you understand God's value of mother. Pray that you understand that. Flowers are a symbol that doesn't even come close. Smell them, enjoy them, but they don't come close to what we want to say thank you. Flowers as thanks. Here, here's a gift, here's flowers. Flowers could never be enough to truly say thank you for all that mothers do. Again, when we think about the responsibility, the challenges of motherhood, flowers, thank you, but they don't do enough to truly say thank you. Then flowers are, have a sweet fragrance, right? But their fragrance are a mere fragment of the beauty and the essence of a mother. When I think about my wife as a mother, there's, I catch over the years, almost 30 years, this glimpses of her in motherhood. It's just beautiful to me. And it powers me to do what I do every day, 
for the job that I do. I think about my own blessing and having a mother in my home. And it certainly inspires me as I work with women all over the country. I know what a good mother looks like. And people that have gotten to know my child, I remind them, they had a, hey, he has a great mom and I have a great wife. And so again, enjoy the flowers, but they're just a fragment of the beauty that we see in you as a mother. So I say happy Mother's Day and thank you all for saying yes to motherhood, those that are mothers. Thank you for saying yes, because as we said, they could have said no. So thank you all for choosing motherhood. We thank those that even that can't be a mom. There are so many friends that I have, uh, women friends that I have that are not biological mothers, but they are mothers in so many ways. And so I thank, thank God for those that choose motherhood whether they a mother themselves or they're supporting motherhood, ensuring that they're safe motherhood. There are all kinds of people that are doing work to keep our moms safe. So thank God for you. Happy Mother's Day. And thank you uh, for choosing motherhood. Father, we thank you today. We bless you. We give you glory and honor. You've done great things, Wolf. We are glad. And we know that motherhood is in your hands. Ultimately, you have established humanity, God. And you intended for us to be fruitful and multiply. You intended for us to have children and to create community. And we thank you for community, even with the challenge that we've had throughout the centuries, oh God. As a community, we can take care of all of our children. We can be the mothers, we can be the fathers, we can be the aunties and we can be the uncles. We can be the brothers and we can be the sisters to take care of each other. And so that is our prayer, that we take care of each other. We thank you for mothers, God those that are with children, those that are without, those that have lost their children, those that are separated from their children. We want to lift them up, especially, oh God, that they continue to be encouraged because it's when children are taken, it's such a slap in the face and really a challenge to your self-esteem. And so we pray for those moms today that may be in that struggle today. We ask you to strengthen them now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for your peace, your grace to be with them now in the name of Jesus. We pray for all the children Again, those 407,000 that we know of in this country, the ones that are in this state, we pray for those 63,800 parents that have lost their rights. We pray for restoration, for them, restoration for these children. We thank you for your grace, your divine ability that works in us doing things that we cannot do ourselves. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, in Jesus' name, amen.